All right, thank you for joining me. Um, I thought it was just going to be a two-part video, but it's actually going to be a three-part video. The third part, I will go out into the field and we'll look at some of these uh, columns ourselves up personal. Um, this is Cape Stol S T O L B Chatty Stol Chatty Island in Russia. That's where a lot of the stuff I've been showing you uh, comes from. These here are look at how these pillars of tendon come up together at an angle like that. And then we also have remember the the bundles I was showing you. That's in the same place. They're just a. I just found this site it has all these stuff where. It's absolutely 100% biological, and I'll get into a little bit of that here in just a minute and bring up some more of that science that I've been sh showing you where they think it all happens underneath the surface because of magma and the way it's cooled. And uh, One of the things they say is that uh, the magma is cooled by underground rivers, oceans, and things like that, which is <laughs> that's ridiculous because, for one thing, uh, when you get into... <clears throat> things like that with water coming in contact with molten things like lava and stuff like that or magma it becomes very explosive because of the steam because you have you know for every you know equal equal and opposite for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction and when you have cold water coming against something liquid like magma or lava it becomes very volatile volatile and explodes and just destroys whatever it was touching so for seawater or river underground rivers or anything to be getting into this and leaching into this it would become very explosive and work its way and fracture its way in and get deeper and deeper plus you're also especially ocean water you're dealing with hydraulics and the sheer weight and force behind the ocean waters themselves it would just absolutely destroy the, the the magma it would not leave columns perfect hexagonal columns okay impossible absolutely impossible okay one of the reasons I say that have you ever noticed when uh, something really hot meets something really cold here's a video right here when magma meets water and you know this man's taking molten magma put it in water and it becomes so violent that it's not even funny because you have a heat exchange and you have lots of steam and steam will just explode if it can't escape real fast the conditions for magma to be have cold water hitting them would have to be so absolutely perfect and they still would not form he perfect hexagonal patterns like we were just looking at. It becomes very violent and it does not ever look and appear the same way because it, it, it gets really super porous when, it, you know, when it's cooled that way. And it would not look at the perfect formations we see as they you know would form as I like they're saying being helped cool with water and things like that they become very violent when it's affected by cold temperatures for reaction there's an equal and opposite reaction okay there's so many videos on that you can go look at and see what happens when um, magma or lava it comes in contact with with very cold water this is a very good video here because it shows you know, what happens, uh, how violent it can actually get when you put, you know, got hot water and magma, it explodes and just destroys everything. It doesn't make perfect hexagonal patterns. So their theory on it being cooled by underground rivers and streams and ocean water, not true. So yesterday in the part one video, I brought up some science and some uh, models behind what they were uh, doing and um, the outcome they were having on really small chunks of basalt that they had carved down into round cylinders. Remember that they carved them down into round cylinders and I showed you one of them here. Let me turn on the light here for a minute. Hold on. Okay, this is one of the uh, pieces I showed you that they had carved down bone shapes so they could clamp both ends and watch the contraction and as they heated it up to 900 and some degrees Celsius then they'd cool it down and watch for fractures and stuff like that. Remember how the size of it? Here's my hand. So they're basing things that we see in nature on a massive scale off of little teeny things they take and carve down of chunks of basalt and then heat them up what they call basalt or magma which it never was, it's, it's biology. And then they also uh, took some discs, they'd carve some round discs and the round discs that they would carve would be uh, 40 millimeters by 20 millimeters which is an inch and a half by 13 sixteenths okay real small around and yet they're basing everything that we're seeing in nature on these 
theories of theirs, which is totally preposterous, especially the, uh, with them cooling with cold temperature water. So yesterday I was bringing up some of these uh, studies they have and some of these uh, mollies they're doing over in Liverpool um, at the Experimental and Volcanology and Geothermal Laboratory at University of Liverpool. And this was in 2018 they published this, April 2018, thinking they've discovered how these columns are formed. And like I said, one of the theories is, you know, it's cooled down by water, uh, ocean waters, underground rivers, and underground creeks and stuff like that run into them to help cool them, which is insanity. Insanity. Because it because of what happens when you have something really super hot and molten meeting something really cold. You get explosions. You get you get magmatic magmatic um, explosions. Under, especially if they're underground trapped and they, they, the venting can't happen fast enough, you'd have such an explosion, It's like I just showed you, it's incredible. But yet they think all that, well, no, because of what they're seeing. And I can understand what they're saying because, you know, they're basically looking at things um, from, um, there is no God. And what they are seeing is something would happen scientifically over millions and billions of years of um, evolution. You know, so yesterday when I got into the methods they were using, I was only showing you one, one, one thing that they'd made. And they, they were using that that was, uh, let's see, what was that, like 20 millimeter by f uh, 10 millimeter or something like that. It's that small piece I was showing you. They also had like four other uh, things that they ground down, like the discs, and they were doing different things with them. So um, their hypothesis was that, you know, this is what's creating all the basalt all these columns and these uh, basalt columns we see and then the fracturing, the jointing that causes the joints is caused from you know water getting in there and, and you know also the way they cool from the inside out and retention and things like that which I 100% disagree with because of what I see and I'm just not that stupid okay I mean if you got half a brain and think about what really happens with this stuff and what you know any of you men out there or women even that worked with uh, oxyacetylene and welding and you know what happens with metals and things like that and temperature you know all you got to do is use your brain a little bit and realize a lot of this stuff is just preposterous insanity and it's not true this is one of my favorite videos from that same place in Russia because you can see with your own eyes right here they're in bundles how they form in bundles too. Think about that for one minute. How would basalt columns cooled with water also form perfect hexagonal patterns, not explode, and be in bundles? How? By luck? By chance? By blind luck? Come on. No, it's biological. 100% biological. There's no doubt about it. And um, a lot of the things that I find are muscle and tendon, and I'll show you why I say that. Okay, I like to use a lot of it here north of me at the Columbia River Basalt Group. You see the colors in here? A lot of the reds. A lot of the basalt, or these columns, or these tendon fibers, or muscle fibers, I find, will be gray. Okay? I've also found them red, pinkish, which means they got Fe, Fe203 blood, or iron, still in them. The ones that I find that are dark gray and light, light gray and stuff like that, those are more your tendon, because tendon does not have that much arteries, that much red blood in it, that many veins in it. In fact, if you've ever skinned an animal, or if you ever found um, tendon in your, you know, anything you're eating, you'll notice it's white. You know, especially if you've, you know, butchered an animal. I, I've butchered a lot, you know, hunting and stuff like that. And they're, they're white, because they don't have much blood supply. And that is what is the gray part here when they're transitioned to stone, basically. The muscle fibers I still find still have the red in them. These here still have a lot of the red in it, and during trans, you can see the um, you can see the sulfur still leaching out of them. That's sulfur's part of the transition in blood. Okay, when it's being transitioned, so there's a lot of sulfur in your blood. Here's more of them here. See this this reddish color? This is going to be more muscle muscle fibrils than it will be the tendon. Um, I found them red on the coast, and I find them here other places. I find them where they're light gray. Devil's Tower. Um, they're a real light. They're a gray color. They're not reddish in color because it's tendon material. Okay, here's Ask an Earth and Space Scientist. How are basalt columns formed? And they get into telling you how they're formed. Over here's 
uh, like I told you over in Russia, that Cape Stolchaty, Russia, may look like they were put here on purpose, but they are actually the tops of columns formed from cooling lava. That's not true. If you had any of the water come in contact with this, it would totally explode everything you see, and you wouldn't see perfect hexagonal patterns. It totally destroys, and also makes it very porous. Okay, water hitting a liquid molten lava or magma under the surface would make it very porous. You would not see these columns that are really nice and smooth and on and on like that. Yes, down here lower where it says, um, it talks about the more evenly the centers pull. That means it's more likely it will cool into hexagonal chunks. Scientists also think that the fast cooling, cooling like with lava exposed to water may also help with the formation of these columns. <laughs> no, don't. In insanity. The, the cold water would crack and fracture it, not in perfect columns like this, and it would also be so pitted, because if you go look at how magma, when it pours into the ocean, or lava, when it pours into the ocean, totally destroys it. This is lava pouring into the ocean. And it totally does not look nothing like we see on land. Even the stuff below the surface that they're calling pillow basalt does not look nothing like it does with the stuff we find on land, okay? Because the two are totally separate from each other. They look similar. Well, actually, they really don't. <laughs> but they think they do because of certain things, and they don't, okay? And so, you know, you can, you can come up and watch a lot of these videos of how lava, when it comes in contact with water, and how it just does not look anything like we see on land. Nothing compared to what we find in these columns or anything else, okay? And so, you know, we're all being led down a road that is not true. And it's a creation that does not take five billion years of evolution. It was supernatural event. Supernatural things that we can't understand as mere human beings in these physical bodies. So, I don't know, I'm keeping this short and sweet. I just, there's a few things I wanted to share, you know, for one thing, I, there was more to the story than yesterday, and uh, I'm going to bug on out of here, so, you know, all we got to do is use our brains here, folks. Now, a lot of the reasons, you know, science does what it was, whether it be ge ge geology or just academia in general, they do it because of money. If they don't come up with theories, if they don't come up, up with a lot of things, they don't get a paycheck, okay? So they have to be constantly thinking outside the box and trying to figure this stuff up and come up with theories that make it work so they can get a paycheck. That's the bottom line. You just, even these professors at school, if they, if, they don't, if they don't perform, they don't get a paycheck. So money, they're serving a false god, a god of money and a god of pride. Okay? Because they, they won't back down. They won't look at anything outside the box. Their minds are bridled. And you, you and me, as people that haven't been um, force-fed this stuff, we can, our minds can actually think and actually work because we can think outside the box. You understand what I'm saying? And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Your mind is not bridled. But also it can swing too far the other way. <laughs> so you got to be very careful here and walk a fine line. All right. Okay, this is in Russia, that island I'm talking about. And I'm going to leave a link to it so you folks can come on up here. And you can check a lot of this stuff out yourself, okay? And you'll see with your own eyes. Just think on a scale that's so massive and a lot of it's eroded and gone. You know, that's why it doesn't look like a creature still laying there because we have no idea what the carcass, the shape it was. And after just a couple weeks, a carcass gets so... It turns into fluids. It turns into runoff. It turns into a lot of things get missing. The skin's gone on and on. If you've ever found a carcass, like an elk or a bear or a deer that's been there for two, two weeks, it looks nothing like it did when it was a fresh kill. Okay? Trust me. I've been on enough of them. <laughs> I've seen them. So the things that you're, we're seeing, and uh, they're trying to tell us, well, this is all geological and a, a, an event that just evolved, and it's not true. Okay. So there is a creator. There is a supernatural events that happen we can't explain. And one of them is the Earth we live on and the planets around us. And it goes on and on. Tell you what, I'd love to go to this place and check this all out. You can see over here, this is totally different than this here, and it was back down here with these uh, columns. I don't know if it's flesh or whatever it is, but it's nothing like they're they're not they're not hexagonal right here at all. It's just a mound of something. Okay, you look at this right here, and you can still see the heck you know the it's it's the stuff. I was trying to show you that has the tendon bundles, and then you see this in here, and this one here, they come together at two angles like this. Seriously? That's magma that did that? And then here's that mound I'm talking about back in here that's totally different than everything else. 
I would love to go here, man. I'll tell you what, I'd go nuts. Or more nuts. <laughs> Nuttier. <laughs> but there's just phenomenal, phenomenal pictures here. Video, I mean, stuff going on there. Incredible places I've seen. I just found it. I was wondering where that stuff was coming from I was finding. So I did a little research and it's coming from Russia. 100% biological, bona fide biology, turned to stone, rotted corpses. That's what we are living on. And there's also volcanism mixed in. Don't get me wrong. There's still magma. There's still, I'm not denying that one bit. But that's part of the violent part of this earth. It's uh, coming apart. The earth is coming apart. Okay. Just like Jesus said, eventually it's going to pass away and burn up. Just like Roger Spur and a lot of you know, volcanology and seismology is confirming that this planet of ours is going to destruct pretty eventually here. Just like the words of Jesus. Anyway, so I'm going to leave you with that thought and um, that you are not here by chance. You're not here by evolution. You're not here from stardust. None of that stuff they're trying to feed you. Okay? Now, you have the right to believe that if you want. That's no problem with mine, of my, with me. I mean, that's, everybody has free will. But I don't like, you know, we're being told things that are not true by basically godless people that don't even want a god or a created god, a creation. And so, you know, they, they look at things scientifically, material, things like that. They don't even think about the supernatural. They don't think about things like this could even be possible. And yes, they are. And these tendon bundles, you, prove it. There's absolutely prove it the way they're in bundles like that. And I've showed you this before in the last video. So, video number three. Tuesday, it looks like the weather might be better. There's a chance of snow and stuff, but I'm going to go look at a place that's got tendon fibrils. They're not muscle, they're tendon. And I'll go take the drone and we'll go there and we'll check some stuff out. We'll look at some stuff and notice how it's not porous and everything like it should be if it was magma. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't come out perfect and everything from, from molten magma and lava. It just doesn't. I mean, I, you know, it is what it is. All right, so thanks for joining me. I'm going to bug on out of here. I hope this helps. Uh, I've looked at a lot of scientific studies behind what they, why they think basalt is these columns and the fracturing and the jointing is caused. I 100%, 150% disagree. For one thing, you can't take little teeny chunks of it like this that are only, you know, a half an inch by a half an inch and grind them down into round cylinders when you're done. They're a half an inch by a half inch or an inch and a half by an inch and then cool them and you know manipulate them like they did the disc they did some manipulation there te testing the tensile strength and then say well this is what it is all over the planet this this is what causes it oh yes this is it preposterous not gonna happen not not especially with cold water hitting it especially ocean water and having the hydraulics behind it that would flood it it wouldn't just seep in you got too much pressure and too much hydraulics behind it if you understand hydraulics to just be barely seep, seeping in and cooling just perfect and a little more water just perfect and a little more water just perfect come on man really come on all right i'm out of here and uh oh this is a good picture this is pretty look at some of this stuff i mean it's just fascinating this is like some of the stuff I find on the coast. You can actually, when you have mud fossil eyes and can see through the lies, it just blow your mind what's in front of you. I mean, absolutely blow your mind. Okay? Roger Spur shows a lot of this, but people don't want to listen because, you know, they just like it in the world, safe little cocoon where they're at, and they don't want, can't, probably can't handle the truth, to be honest with you. <laughs> But you know, hey, it's not their fault. Um, it is what it is, and they're allowed to believe what they want. So, you know, just don't shove it down our throats, right, folks? Because a lot of us, we know the truth. We know what's going on. And um, once you see through the lies with mud fossil eyes, you'll see it yourself. All right, God bless. Uh, video 3 coming up hopefully Tuesday I'll get out, and we'll get her done. Bye-bye now.